from the EPAWA headquarters in South Allentown, Pennsylvania, it's time for Weather Weeklies, an informative video of the ins and outs of weather that affect you most in the EPAWA coverage area. The following segment is a weekly video blog, and the opinions of the forecaster do not necessarily reflect the opinions of the staff of Eastern PA Weather Authority LLC as a whole, nor its constituents. Without further ado, here is meteorologist Bobby Marchers with Weather Weeklies. And good Sunday morning to you. Another edition of Weather Weeklies for Sunday, January 24th. And what a storm. What a storm that we just had uh, yesterday. This is just the most impressive thing that I've ever personally seen in my life. Of course, I was in the epicenter, uh, so to speak, here with the most snow recorded anywhere in our South Allentown location. This is a look at my street here. This is at about uh, 4 p.m. yesterday. Of course, this ended up with maybe a couple more inches on top of this from what this uh, image looked like. But uh, these are cars here, folks, and uh, many of us are seeing these images here completely buried. Now, these guys uh, over here that are you can see cars here, that's because they were smart enough to come out a couple times during the storm and, and shovel. And I did the same thing with the snowblower. It came out. Uh, you know, several times. I think I'm going to be making my fourth pass this morning. <laughs> Unbelievable. But just an incredible amount of snow here. And we did set records in Allentown here. Uh, over two feet in many locations across the region. But Allentown, PA, uh, have the, had the most snow ever recorded from one storm. 31.9 inches of snow fell at Allentown, Lehigh Valley International Airport. So that is the official number. I had 32.6 here, so we weren't too far off in our, our measurements here. A lot of people ask us, how do we measure when you have the wind blowing and there's so much snow? I actually have two snowboards. One is 20 they're both 24 inches deep but they have they're able to be dumped at the bottom where you can get rid of all the snow as often as you like the other one one i let you, it is and it's it's a, it's a box so it has you know it's shielded from the wind so it just falls in there so you're not getting the wind uh blowing out of the northeast you don't even get any of that effect there it's just whatever falls falls then one of these 24 inch boxes filled up completely and started overflowing so obviously we knew we had more than 24 inches but once i get to a certain point of the measurement, I saw it was coming close to the two feet. I was like, okay, we're going to start dumping one of these out. So, I, again, I have two of them. Uh, one I started dumping out, and you know, I was collecting hourly measurements and getting uh, – that's how I was able to do it. So once we hit 24 inches, uh, then one was dumped, and we just started doing hourly measurements after that said, okay, well, we had four inches this hour, so we're going to add that to the total. We had two inches this hour, we're going to add it to that total. And that's exactly how you do it at that point. And they're both shielded from the wind, so you don't get – you get it as close to an accurate measurement as possible. So 32.6 is what I ended up with here, 31.9 of the airport. That is the official record. Most snow ever recorded 24-hour period. I have 30.0 in here. This is actually 30.2. Uh, so we did another, another point two uh, before this uh, – after the 7 p.m. observation last night. Highest snow depth ever recorded, also 31.9. Now, the previous record is 25.9 here in Allentown. That was uh, the Blizzard 96, so we smashed that by six inches, six full inches uh, above the highest ever recorded since 1922 when records started being kept. And here is the uh, snow depth that was also six inches higher than the previous record of 24. Highest snow depth is uh, 28, so it's almost four inches higher than the highest snow depth. When I talk about snow depth, I'm talking about total accumulated snow on the ground that no, I mean normally it's over several storms and you can say okay well we the snow depth uh, we might have had many storms and with some melting and then some additions and more storms you, the most we ever had on the ground at one time in Allentown was 28 inches that is now a new record so uh, again uh, just tremendous here with these records here but here's what we're looking at at the, at the reason why on the radar actually I jumped ahead of real quick one other tidbit here before five inches of snow fell between 2 and 3 p.m. alone yesterday which is incredible 12 inches of snow fell between 1 and 4 p.m., so a foot of snow in three hours. That's pretty incredible, too. A normal season of snowfall in Allentown is 32.9 inches, and we almost got it in one storm. That is just tremendous. Now, why did that happen? Here is that band. Um, we had a deformation zone that was set over, a convective deformation zone that was set up over eastern PA here. And this band here is a tremendous rate. This was a 3 to 4 inch per hour rate, sometimes 5 in some cases, and it just sat over the same area and didn't move for, th for about three hours. So, uh, again, this is why you got that 12, uh, 12 inches over a three-hour period and why you have the highest totals in Allentown because this didn't move. When it finally started to move, it started picking up steam moving southeast here. Uh, so it wasn't a slow, slow to move in advance. It just stalled over this area for a couple hours. And then when it started to move... It moved slowly moved to the southeast, and then started to decrease in intensity as it did so. So uh, areas to the south across Bucks and Montgomery County, especially by Quakertown, got close. Not 30, but they got the pretty close, upper, upper 20s to, to near 30 in snowfall. 
and uh, it just was a matter of this uh, band of where it was going to set up, and it's just a luck of the draw, really, because you still have some heavy snow all around it. But this band, this is a convective band, and this is exactly why uh, Allentown did so well with this storm. Now, we did see this come a long time ago. We started talking about this early. We started putting it, we put a post up here on the on the Facebook page last Sunday, so a week ago, that we had confidence increasing on a storm this week this weekend, meaning yesterday. Uh, here is the GFS. Everybody says the NAM nailed this. Well, it did. It did. I don't want to give it. Give it. I want to give it as a just do because it's a short range model that goes out to just 84 hours in the future. Here's the GFS early Saturday morning. Uh, this is now. Uh, this is now eight days ago. Eight days ago, and look what it showed. It showed a big snowstorm across our area. Had this low tucked in exactly where it was. Okay, it even went as far as to show it being captured and stalled. So this is this is eight days ago. Everyone wants to talk about the name. What about the GFS? GFS did very well in this in the long range. Now in the short range, I'll give you, it wasn't as good. However, when we look at long range signals and we see something like this. And we start alerting the public at, at uh, seven, you know, almost seven days out. We do it for a reason. This is a very strong signal we saw last week, okay? And it was supported by other things. Here is the archetype image from the from the Canadian. Did the same thing. Stalled, captured, big snowstorm. Even had a deformation band here over Eastern PA. So this is the, this is the Canadian model here from the Saturday more early Saturday morning. European model had to signal with the ensembles. It wasn't on quite on board with the uh, with the operational run just yet. It was late to the game. Euro actually performed the most. Uh, well, actually, was horrible with this storm, and he couldn't get it right all the way to the end. It really struggled with this storm. But uh, some of these models, you look at long range models here, and, and people say, "Oh, well, it's 168 hours out. That's not even worth looking at." Really? Isn't it? Looks pretty good to me. Here's the GFS. Oh, spot on match. Looks pretty good to me. Pretty much what happened yesterday, 100, 168 hours out. Now, a lot of things is always going to happen this way, but you can't just dismiss it saying, oh, it's a long-range GFS. Oh, it's a long-range Canadian. It doesn't know what it's doing. Talk to me over under 72 hours. Hmm, okay. Well, guess what? It nailed it. And by the way, here's that crazy name. I call it the crazy name because everybody called it crazy. And here's the amounts it was putting out here. I mean, these are the, – look it, look what it has in Allentown. Look at that. It has the band sitting over Allentown. And uh, that gave it the more snow than Philadelphia. And it still gave the NAM gave Philadelphia 22 inches. Guess what Philadelphia finished with? 22 inches. 22 inches. It gave Allentown 34 inches. Guess what it finished with? Pretty close. 32. Big snows out here in the lower Susquehanna Valley. Also, Harrisburg over two feet. Now it was a little overdone here with this 40 plus, but you get the point here. NAM was great. And here and, and here is the band. Here is that band where it's set up right here, just like this. So when I put out the final call map, when I put the final call out uh, map, and then in the morning, on Saturday morning, circle an area, I looked at the name and said, well, you know what? And the HRR did the same thing. This area here, somebody's going to hit, hit 30 inches. So when we, we adjust. We adjust during the storm. And, uh, you know, we, we didn't uh, – People, I got a couple people saying that don't understand the process. They said, well, you guys busted. You had 6 to 12 inches in Allentown on your first call. Okay. Folks, we have a first call, second call, final call system. Okay. First call is going to be our preliminary, our preliminary estimates of, of the storm. We understand that it, that's why we have a three-tiered system. It's going to change. So you have the second call. We didn't have a lot of change to that. Final call we did. We upped the totals. And then later that same day, we saw some things that, uh, that were going to change, and I'll show you what those are here coming up. We saw some things that were, going to, that were going to change, and we had to change our outlook and increase the totals. We adjusted as we saw things happen. We did not want to jump on this, this train of the NAM here because we didn't know for sure. I mean, this, this is showing a historical amounts of snowfall. There was never a time in meteorology that anyone would have the balls. Sorry, excuse my French, but no, there was no, no time in meteorology that anybody would have the audacity to – forecast a, as a, a historical snowfall that will eclipse the all-time record by six inches. That is crazy. Crazy. So, we, you know, we'll, we'll go ahead and put ranges on there. And I'll said, I said, you know, 14 to 20 plus. Well, plus could be 100, but whatever. You see what, you see the idea here? So we're, we're not going to forecast that, oh, yeah, Allentown's going to get 32 inches. 
I mean, that's just insane. Especially you don't, where you don't know where that's going to set up that band. It just happened to set up over Allentown. Now, let's look at the uh, the stall and the capture. This is to uh, show you what made, uh, made this happen. All right, we had a deep, uh, first of all, you had a big ridge out here. Deep trough in the east. This actually became cut off. All right, this is at these early stages here. This actually got cut off. You had high pressure uh, that was sitting up to the north, uh, right up here. Right, it was sitting over the top. So every time you have high pressure over the top, that's your cold air source. So we have plenty of cold air for the system. Now, we had one system. The area of low pressure uh, was over Tennessee, all right, and it got to a position right about here to eastern Tennessee, and then transferred its energy to another low off the Carolina coastline. This one here became the primary, and then this one came up the coast like this. Okay, so that's that was the setup. That's what we were looking at aloft. This is looking uh, not at the surface, but up, up in the atmosphere at uh, 500 millibars, which is about 18,000 feet up. Now here is. Uh, here's a better look at that. Here's where that. Here's the low of Eastern Tennessee right here. I know it's going to be hard to see. There's the low. This was in the process of transferring to that second area right here, and then that was coming up here like this. Okay. I know it's hard to see because I'm using blue here, but uh, we'll go on a different image here. Now this is this is what happened. This is a surface plot of what happened here. Now this uh, again, this low was down here. It made it up to this area here. There at the same time there was an upper level low that came across Virginia like this. Okay, and once the two made up, uh, met up over here, we had a stall and a capture. The first thing is it captures, meaning the upper level low is directly over top of the surface low. So here is your capture right here. You had another low that started forming to the east of it, but it wasn't as strong. So this one was the primary that just sat here and it was spinning counterclockwise and just rotating these bands in here off the ocean and we just got a tremendous amount of snowfall. This is what was responsible for that deformation band that happened over the Liette Valley and northwest New Jersey. Eventually, eventually, this low followed the area of convection. Okay, there's an area of convection further east and I'll show you that I'll show you that here. Here's the, this is sort of the GFS here left from last week. This area of convection to the east, there was another low pressure center that formed uh, to the east, and they, that low pressure followed that area of convection. So that's exactly what happened there. And then eventually, this uh, transfer of energy took off to the east, and uh, the upper level low released its grip on this one, and then the primary uh, jumped to this low right here. Okay? So that's what ended up happening, and it finally pulled away last night. So just a tremendous storm, and I don't want to spend any more time on that because we've got to have another one to look at here. Uh, the Friday storm, <laughs> this is amazing. Uh, I really don't want this. I, again, I told you I have 32 inches here. I have no, no idea where I'm putting this. But the ensembles are keying on another system being just offshore here. We're going to have to watch this. The operational guidance is keeping this offshore for the most part. Uh, but we're going to keep an eye on this closely uh, because we, we, if history repeats itself, here's the uh, European model. Uh, in the upper air pattern of the European model. If history repeats itself, we saw this week that it was, the European model was, was too uh, it was too slow with the southern stream here. And by doing that, the northern stream energy ran out ahead of it. If that ends up happening, it's just heading out like this, and it's not going to affect this area whatsoever. But I, like I said, if history repeats itself, and this is holding back this energy once again, it'll be a different situation. Here's yesterday's Canadian model showing the same thing. Uh, it was not slow with this southern stream energy, like this. It is way, so it's a little faster like it has been. Uh, the northern energy is able to dive down and catch up to it, and then you have a big snowstorm over here. All right, so we're going to keep a close eye on this. It's a very possible uh, that the models are, are, in some cases, holding this energy back and a little slow with the southern stream. We have seen that this southern stream is very active and very fast, and that's because of El Nino, and we knew this for so long. This is why this was happening. But uh, don't worry about the cold air source. If this is a big storm out here uh, off the coastline, and you know people are saying, well, the temperatures are more marginal. Well, if you have a big storm, it's going to draw in some cold air, so I ain't worried about that. But right now we're just deciding whether or not it's going out to sea or up the coast, and it's going to give some... Uh, at least a graze of, of a storm here to the east coast here. We'll keep a close eye on it. Unfortunately, I have to go right back into this uh, into this pattern here where we're, we're following storm after storm. Here is the Mount Julian Oscillation. Currently, we're projected to just stay in the circle of death, which means uh, the Mount Julian Oscillation has no effect on the pattern. So El Nino and uh, you know different teleconnections are going to be running the pattern here. We saw that it was in the circle of death for this storm here, and we got a historical storm, so it doesn't matter. 
you know, this we're not even going to talk about until it gets, there are some models actually indicating it's going to stay in the circle of death for a little bit and then adventure out in the, in the warmer phases here. Very possible here. We'll just keep an eye on it. But right now, it doesn't look like uh, this is running the pattern whatsoever, obviously. We just saw that with uh, this back, last big storm. Uh, now, we're going to go through a kind of a little bit of a milder period here, a transitional period as we go into... Uh, you know, the last week of this month here, uh, I do think it might even last in early February. We're going to be kind of above average as, as a whole, but you're going to have some colder and warmer periods. Now, uh, I do think that, I do think since the areas have so much snow cover here, the models are going to bust high on their forecast projections. So if they're saying it's, uh, your, if your little phone app is telling you, you know, from the Weather Channel or whatever, it's uh, AccuWeather. If it's telling you it's going to be 38, you probably could, some, if you have a lot of snow cover on the ground, I would subtract a few degrees off of that. Because what the snow does is actually insulates the air above it. So, you know, if there were no snow there, sure, it would be, th it would be 38. The models have no way of projecting temperatures based on snow cover on the ground. It does not take that into, into consideration. So if it's saying it's going to be 30, 38, 39, 40 degrees, more, it might be more like 34, 35 at most, just because of that snow cover. So keep that in mind this upcoming week. It might not be as warm as it seems. Sun and stratospheric warming, we talk about this too. Now, this is the uh, European model's indication that the GFS was on this first. This is what we're looking at currently uh, with it sitting over the North Pole. We've got a little warming event going on here. Here's day seven. becomes a big warming event, which is going to displace this polar vortex and set us up for uh, – set us up here for uh, – the month of February. What does that do? That uh, by having the sun stratospheric warming in place, you get some high latitude blocking, and we are in for a wild ride for February. We've been saying this is the beginning of the winter outlook here. Unfortunately, we're not letting go of this winter. I really don't want any more snow. Believe me, I'm, if you're not one that wants snow, I'm with you. I have no idea where I'm putting the snow today. This is a season's worth of snowfall I just got in one storm, and I'm sick of it already. But uh, we, we were saying this is the winter outlook. We have a lot of a wild February, uh, possibly wild March, and that's going to be set up by that sun stratospheric warming. It's going to set up high latitude blocking. That brings the Arctic air down the east. Uh, in eastern United States, here's that block over Greenland. And you get storm after storm in the southern jet, and then uh, you, know, you get a pretty busy February uh, and uh, probably March too. So a lot of fun times ahead. <laughs> I say that in a sarcastic way. I also wanted to let you know we have our EPA. We brought this out before this last storm here. EPA WA custom models. Go to the top of the page here in the navigation bar to the far right. We have the weather models link here. It'll take you to all the latest model runs, give you snowfall uh, maps and things like that. It's specific to the EPA WA coverage area. Check that out. Uh, and uh, it is a free product. You don't have to be a premium member to see any of that. Thank you for all the support throughout this last storm. We had a tremendous, tremendous outpouring of support. A lot of you signed up for a My Pocket Meteorologist program. Uh, so we have uh, several thousand people, uh, se many thousands actually, uh, signed up for that. So uh, it was a, it's a great program. We, we appreciate all the support that we've had through this storm and for our entire time edition PA Weather Authority. We thank you from, uh, from all of us. And uh, we, we look forward to serving you for the rest of the winter. If you do not, not sign up for that program, whether it be the premium form or the text alerts, you can do so by clicking the My Pocket Meteorologist image below this uh, video. It will take you right to where you need to sign up. I'm Eastern PA Weather Authority Meteorologist Bobby Marchers. That is this edition of Weather Weeklies for January 24th, 2016. We'll see you again next week.